this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make one of these cool little Halloween trick-or-treat baskets. Uh, the one in particular that we're going to do that you're going to be that you're going to see today is this one here. This will be the one that's made in the in the tutorial for you. Um, some of the supplies that you're going to need or the tools that you're going to need is going to be newspaper, tape, plastic wrap, paper mache paste, paper clay, a spoon, sculpting tools, you're going to need paint brushes, paint, plastic wrap, jute twine, scissors, a hand saw or the carpenter's knife can be used as well. You're going to need a hot glue gun and a hot glue stick. But you're not going to use this how you think you are. The first thing we're going to do is create our armature. To do this, we will start with a stack of newspaper and crumble it into a ball, one sheet at a time. Now that you have a decent sized ball, use some masking tape to hold it into place. Next, you're going to cover the ball with plastic wrap. Be sure that you cover the entire ball. You may need to use some additional tape to hold this into place. The reason we use plastic wrap is to ensure a smooth surface for the inside of our trick-or-treat basket. Now that the ball is prepped, it's time to cover it with strip mache. Spread some paste over the ball, then apply a strip of paper. You want to smooth that out, add some more paste, and apply another strip of paper. You want to continue like this until you've completely covered the ball. Be sure to apply at least six layers of strip mache. The more layers you have, the stronger your project is. Once all the layers are applied, set the ball in front of a fan to dry. Make sure you rotate the ball every couple of hours to ensure that all sides dry. This should dry up completely in about 24 hours. Now that your ball is completely dry, the first thing you're going to do is cut off the top. Remember to be careful anytime you're working with a saw or a knife. If you don't have a hand saw like the one I'm using here, you can cut off the top with a carpenter's knife just as easy. Once the top is off, pull out just enough paper so you can turn the ball over and set it down flat. With your ball now setting upside down, it's time to apply your paper clay. Start by applying the clay to the bottom of your pumpkin and spreading it out. You'll want your clay to be about a quarter of an inch to half an inch thick. Apply the clay all the way around your ball, but leave about a half inch of the top uncovered. After 
you've applied the clay, use the back side of a spoon handle to smooth out the surface. Using a glue stick, mark the center of your pumpkin. Now dip your glue stick in some water and begin to stamp the grooves into your pumpkin. After you have stamped in all the grooves, use your fingers or the spoon to smooth over the edges. Now that you've shaped the bottom of your pumpkin, it's time to turn it over. Press it down firmly to create a nice flat base. Take the spoon or your hand and work over any areas that seem a bit lumpy. Grab your glue stick again and finish stamping in the grooves. Once again, using your fingers or the spoon, work over the edges of the grooves to create that well-known pumpkin shape. The batch of clay I was using was a little too wet, so I used a paintbrush and some paper mache paste to finish smoothing and shaping the pumpkin. Starting with the eyes, take an X-Acto knife and lightly start to draw them into the clay. If you're happy with them, go over them again, but this time cut deeper into the clay. Be sure not to cut through the strip mache, you're only cutting through the clay.
Once you have a good separation, you can begin to remove the unwanted clay. Once the clay is gone, use a flat bladed tool to clean up the edges. You will use the same method for the mouth. Now this is a perfect example of how you can fix something that you're not happy with. After I first carved in the mouth, I decided that it wasn't wide enough. So using a paintbrush and some paper mache paste, I erased part of the mouth.
Remember to clean up your edges as you go. Once your face is complete, set your pumpkin in front of a fan to dry. After 24 hours, you should be able to pick it up and lay it on its side so that the bottom can dry. Once your pumpkin is dry, pull out all the stuffing, including the plastic wrap. You're going to finish off your project by applying a small ball of clay to each section, rounding off the top and blending it in with the dried clay below. You're going to do this one section at a time until you've gone completely around your pumpkin.
Your pumpkin is now completely sculpted, dried, and ready for paint. Start by applying a base coat of flat black latex exterior paint. You'll paint the entire pumpkin black inside and out. Now that the base coat is finished and dried, we will finish the painting process. Start by dry brushing white paint onto your pumpkin. We will be leaving the inside black so there's no need to dry brush the inside. After the white has completely dried, it will be time to add color to your pumpkin. The process I'm using here to add color is more like a tea stain than it is paint. Water down some brown paint and brush it into all the grooves of the pumpkin. Once the grooves are covered, we will move on to the orange color. The orange I'm using here is a mixture of orange, brown, and water. Cover the entire outside of the pumpkin with this color. After you've gone all the way around once, come back and hit just the outer sides of the pumpkin. Try not to paint the grooves again.
Once the orange paint has fully dried, I come back with a watered down stain and go over the grooves one last time. The final step in painting is to go back and repaint the eyes and mouth black. The final step in this project is to add the jute twine handle. Start off by drilling two holes in your pumpkin straight across from one another, as close to center as you can get. Now take about two feet of jute twine Fold it in half to find center and mark it with a piece of tape. Set the twine down on your workspace, measure off about three fingers width from center and apply another piece of tape. Do this on both sides of center. The space we just marked off will be our true handle. With a hot glue gun, start from one piece of tape and begin to glue another piece of jute twine to it. Once you have glued down the twine from one piece of tape to the next piece, you will begin to wrap that area with the extra twine. It's best to be working straight off the roll of twine. That way you can wrap this area at least three times. Simply start from one end and wrap down to the other end. About midway down the wrap, it's good to apply a little hot glue. Once you're at the end of that section, add a little glue and then work your way back in the opposite direction. Do this at least three times. Once you've wrapped this section at least three times, cut your twine from the roll and glue it into place. Now that you've successfully created the center of your handle, take each end of the jute twine and stick it through the holes you drilled in your pumpkin. Check it to make sure that you have it centered. Then simply tack the twine into place using a little hot glue. Tie a couple knots as close as you can to the inside of your 
pumpkin, glue those knots down to the inside as well for extra hold and cut off any extra twine. After that, your pumpkin is complete. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you learned something new today. And remember, as always, keep making something from nothing.